From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Friday, February 9th. I'm Diane Parker in for Augusta McDonald. More details emerging this morning in a hit and run accident that left a young mom from the Billings area dead on the side of the road. The body of 28 year old Cassie McCauley was found in Laurel Sunday night. And according to the family's GoFundMe, that discovery was made by her mom after she went searching for her daughter. Family and friends also say she was fleeing a domestic violence situation the night she went missing and that the reason she was walking on the side of the road is because of that. The family is demanding justice in both of the cases, but as of now, no arrests have been made. The windmill memorial now stands at the site of Old Highway 10 East where Cassie's body was found. The city is putting a focus on nuisance properties as it looks to get troubled spots cleaned up before it becomes a problem. However, one property in the Billings Heights is only getting worse despite work being done by the code enforcement team to make it better. We first visited this property on Wicks Lane in December and neighbors continue to be frustrated with the lack of progress. Tina Hoger with code enforcement says despite best efforts, the property was sold and now the transfer of ownership and removal of current occupants must play out until any more action can be taken. However, that's little consolation to neighbors who say the problem is taking a mental toll. This is it. You're the father figure of all of us. Get after it. It's depreciating my property value. And you know, it is a mental drain. It is. City Council Member Roy Neese says he understands frustrations and expects to see several revisions brought to the City Council soon so they can tackle these issues in a quicker manner. He says some codes haven't changed in decades, but details on new revisions are set to be unveiled February 20th. All right, and it is Friday, and Ed is in this morning for Miller, and it's so great to see you. Good to see you too, Diane. Yeah, so how are we looking for this weekend forecast? Everyone wants to know. Yeah, uh, well, let's start off because we were talking about seeing each yeah. other, but you can't see much as you get into portions of the state thanks to some visibility concerns. This is a look right now, Mile City. Doesn't look too bad. We've got some fresh snow on the ground there. There's just uh, the plows came through a while ago. 14 degrees there right now, but check out relative humidity at 100%. So there are some visibility concerns into the eastern plains and where it's a little more evident, a look over towards Belgrade. This is the Bozeman Airport right now. And actually, there's been a couple of flights that have taken off from there. You can see the extremely poor visibility with the fog that's around sitting at 20 degrees. And again, humidity is up quite a bit there. There's light snow showers across northern Montana. That starts to head our way as we get later in the day. The impacts mainly in the mountains and foothills for Billings as we take a look at the day planner and the Stockman Bank weather cam temperatures up into the 30s today but there are changes ahead I'll tell you about that coming up in a little bit oh changes ahead all right we will stay tuned for that thanks, thanks a lot Ed well a once familiar face in Montana politics may soon be on your ballot as we first told you yesterday morning former Republican Congressman Denny Reberg is considering a comeback after hearing his name was tested in a poll for Matt Rosendale's seat. And as Reberg tells our Russ Riesinger, he is up for the challenge if he decides to go for it. Had thought about it. And when they called Friday night, they said, whoa, uh, people still know you. Uh, and some of them still like you. So, um, they got me thinking about it. Well, former Montana Congressman Denny Reberg says he can't confirm whether current Congressman Matt Rosendale will make a run for Senate. He sounded a lot like a candidate when I talked to him Thursday night. And I thoroughly enjoyed representing the people of Montana in Congress. So do I have the vigor and enthusiasm? Absolutely. A Billings native, Reberg served as a state representative, lieutenant governor, and Montana's then lone congressman from 2000 to 2012, eventually departing politics after he unsuccessfully challenged Democratic Senator John Tester for the U.S. Senate. He went on to open several fast food franchises in Montana. The inflation is killing average middle class Americans and uh, that's going to be a huge issue. If I do decide to do this, I'm going to jump right in the middle of it and I can use personal experiences of having been out of Congress in small business and having to deal with the price increases and the inflation that's occurring. 
Reberg says the other issue that concerns him the most is what's happening on the southern border. He blames President Biden. Uh, Billings, Montana. You look at the violence that's going on in Billings, you're starting to see the cartels move in, the gangs move in. And so, you know, could I have an influence? I think I can. Congress has become even more divided since Reberg last served, but he believes he can form coalitions to get things done. I also wanted to know his thoughts about former President Donald Trump, who's been a part of that division. So while we may not necessarily like his personality, he hires good people and he gets rid of people that either disagree with him or he doesn't think is doing a good job. But personally, I can tell you, uh, the people I worked with in the Trump administration were top notch. Reberg will join a crowded field of Republican candidates vying for Rosendale's seat if he decides to run. The deadline to make that decision is just over a month away. I'm happy to go back to Washington and fight the good fight. Uh, look forward to representing Montana. In Billings, Russ Riesinger, MTN News. And the filing date to be on this year's ballot is March 11th. New this morning, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks will meet today to discuss wolf quotas in Regions 1 and 2. Region 1 includes Northwest Montana from the Idaho State Line to Glacier National Park, while Region 2 is West Central Montana, including Missoula and Ravalli counties. Regulations require Fish and Wildlife Commissioners to meet when the quota is within 25% of being filled. So far, 103 wolves of 131 animal quota have been killed in Region 1, and 73 of 104 wolves have been taken in Region 2. Wolf hunting and trapping has closed in all other areas of the state. This month is National Career and Technical Education Month, highlighting programs in schools that offer differing skills for students. Yesterday at Huntley Project High School, Governor Gianforte paid a visit to the school's CTE program. The program teaches skills that can be passed down through generations and offers alternative pathways for students to take. And Huntley Project's program is far from the only one seeing success. Programs are thriving all across the state thanks to House Bill 382, which tripled funding for the programs. For science and woodshop teacher Bambi Dalk, seeing the kids succeed is the greatest reward of all. These kids are the reason that I am here. Um, they're special. I love to see them grow and explode and use their, their imagination and, and come up with some of the great, awesome things that you see here today. And House Bill 382 was passed by the legislature this past session. The countdown is on for Super Bowl Sunday here on Q2 as the Kansas City Chiefs take on the San Francisco 49ers. A lot of people will be getting together to enjoy the game or maybe just the commercials. Q2's David J caught up with one fan who will be hosting quite the watch party. This is the place where the Billings Niners faithful meet Craft B&B, &B, just kind of right down the hallway here. That's the main room. Started off with just about four people in that, but now it's grown quite a bit. And the founder of the club has a superstition. So on Super Bowl Sunday, he's going to be wearing his special attire with his authentic helmet and some other 49ers memorabilia. Billings Niners faithful fans celebrate during a comeback victory in the playoffs. That's why we're called the faithful. Win, lose, or tie, Niner till I die. Lucas Seeley is a co-founder of the Billings Niners Faithful, the only 49er faithful group in Montana. There's so many Niner fans in Billings, so it's really awesome. Like, yeah, we get new members every week during the season. The club started with fewer than 10 when Seeley asked if 49er watch parties could be held at Kraft B&B, &B, and now it has more than 100. During the 49ers game, you're lucky to get a seat in here, honestly. Dallas Sluter, the operations manager at Kraft B&B, &B, is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan but he also roots for the 49ers along with the 49er faithful. It's great. I think it's amazing. I think that's something, and we're just lucky to be a part of it, to be honest. We're super thankful. Um, we love our guys. We love our group of people that come in here. Seeley's fanaticism started during the 1988 season when he watched football for the first time. A 49ers win in Super Bowl 23. I just remember the feeling of like, oh, you know, hope they're going to win, and they have that comeback drive, and I was hooked after that. 
Seeley does stand-up comedy, and he has a close connection with the 49ers, having worked with the team on his faithful football forecasts that appeared on the big screen at Levi's Stadium. I'm not that good at playing football. Uh, I wish I could have played for the 49ers, but that was the closest I ever got. Many of the faithful have their superstitions, and some even have their game day attire ready as well. Undefeated in this jersey. Even though we're wearing white in the Super Bowl, I'm like, I'm going to wear this jersey. All sports fans are welcome, but just be ready. If you're a Chiefs fan this weekend and you show up, be ready to, to, to be swarmed by a sea of Niners. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Again, you can watch Super Bowl 58 right here on Q2 with kickoff set for Sunday at 430.